morning I am talking about time to take the gifts. Ano pa yimi no kasa fa emra yaji achediye. Time to take the gifts. Emra yaji achediye. Or we can say time to receive the gifts. Ana se emra oji achediye. I am reading Ecclesiastes chapter three verse one. Making kai osen kafu eti mi ensa chiche muba ko. To everything there is a season. Osi juma di ebi ano emra ewo hong. And a time for every purpose under heaven. Eni emra washama juma di ebi a uye yase. So to everything. Enti adi biara. There is a season. Emre ewo ho. And to every purpose. Na bota ye bi anso. There is a time for it. Ye wona ne emre ya cheche amano. I'm also reading from Ecclesiastes chapter three verse six. Na me siya kenge kwa sana kafu eti mi anza chete muzi ya. A time to get. Emre ye nyia. And a time to lose. Emre ye hure. A time to keep. Emre ye kura. And a time to cast away. Na emre wo tugu. I am talking about a time to receive the gift. Na mikasafa emra yaji achedi yaho. I want to read something from Second Kings chapter five. Making kind bibi suo ahenfungo ma yato sumi yenu etinum. Verse number twenty six to twenty seven. Nji chemu aya dionusiya ekosi adionusiya. Then he said to him. Na oka said. Did not my heart go with you? Makuma ene wo anko. When the man turned back from his chariots to meet you, Emra oberi mane dani ne husi free ne ti asen namsube shiao. Is it time to receive money? Enti a yemra wo jisika. And to receive clothing. Na yaji intadiye. Olive groves. Eni engudia. Vineyards. Eni bobetro. Sheep and oxen. Enyai eni anantiye. Male and female servants. Enkuwa eni mfananiye. Beloved, this. Talks about the day that Gehazi. When you remember, Saint Semi Kasafa Emra Gehazi did what was unbecoming of a servant of God. Emra Gehazi did. You may be an ancestor akwa ana osumfo odi. Gehazi was a personal attendant to Prophet Elisha. Na Gehazi ni pasrungu wa osum odi for Elisha. A certain warlord in Syria. Na okufobi peni ni bi awo Syria. Called Naaman. Ani dindi Naaman. A man that used to oppress the children of Israel. In one of the raiding of Israel. They took a certain young lady. Into captivity. And this young lady became his maid. And this mighty man called Naaman suffered from something that was unknown to the rest of the world. The king of Syria adored him so much. His guarantee earned him great favor. But he suffered from leprosy. One day the young lady saw it. That could be Afnana or Fana Kwanu Ehui. And the young lady spoke to his wife. Na Afnano ne ne madam ekasai. That this disease. Na ose sai yari yi. Is incurable by medical standards. Yet the hunam from ayarisa chesha yi ajuma into me sai yari. There is a man of God in Israel. Na onyami ni pebi ewo Israel. In the city of Samaria. Awa ti Samaria krom. If only my master will go to him. Semi urayi ba kwa onyami ni pebi huwa. God will touch him. Ewari de ne sabe kano. Today God will touch you. You see, in almost every situation, there are things that are incurable by our medical standards. Sometimes our common sense cannot fathom what is going on. But there's always our God who is ready to touch you and to meet you at the point of your knee. So the man listening to the maid, I want to advise all of us gathered here. It is possible that God will conceal your deliverance in a small boy. God can conceal your deliverance in the hand of your maid. So if you are a big man or a big woman, you must also learn how to go down. Because 
God gives more grace to the humble. And he will certainly resist the proud. This Naaman initially listened to the young girl. Then he organized himself and took some gifts laying them on donkeys. Then they moved to the city of Israel. But before they went there, he sought permission from the king of Syria. Then the king of Syria said, let me support you with a letter of recommendation. But in that letter of recommendation, the king of Syria made a huge mistake. He addressed it to the king of Israel that I am bringing my warlord to you. He is suffering from leprosy. And try as much as possible to heal him. Heal his disease before he returns to me. When the king of Israel got the letter, he knew that the king of Syria was trying to put up a fight with him. For goodness sake, I'm just a king. I'm not a healer. I'm not a medical doctor. Why are you making such a huge demand from me? The king of Israel then was not on talking terms with Elisha. Elisha was a man of God in town. And the king forgot that his exploits were known internationally. You see, God has anointed you into an international office. No, I didn't hear an amen from you. He said, on the day of your birth, I was there and I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. Do you accept this office? They say, I receive it. Let somebody say, I receive it. Then as the king was lamenting, somebody told it to Elisha. And Elisha said, let them bring the man to me. Then they will know that there is God in Israel. Very soon, they will know that there is God in CAC. That there is God in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So the man went to Elisha. But Elisha will not allow him to enter into his house. House. Elisha sent somebody to go and meet him to convey a message to that big man. That big man, you don't have to enter into my house. There is a river in Israel. When you read Psalm 46, the Bible says that there is a river that flows in the city of God. And the streams of that river will give joy to the city of God. He said, go to River Jordan. Go and dip yourself seven times in the waters of the Jordan River. Then Naaman said, what an impudence. The man of God will not even come out to meet me. He will not even look at my face. Has he forgotten who am I? Hey! Hey! Is he telling me that this Jordan River is better than the rivers of Damascus? I am going back. You see, in great arrogance, he thought he had it all. He had money. He had political connections. He, he was used to pampering by powerful people. So he thought that the man of God would do the same thing to him. Somebody will ask this question. Why didn't Elisha 
at least step out to meet him. You see, Elijah was simply obeying the laws of God. Because the law of God says that the lepers should not enter into the city. They must live at the outskirts of the city. So this man entering into the city of Samaria was even in breach of the laws of God. If the king of Israel is afraid of you and he has opened the door for you to enter, I am a man of God. I exist to do the will of God and I will not contradict the law of God just because you are a powerful man. I pray that God raises men and women who have the confidence to say the right thing in the right situation. Then the man was leaving. But there was something good about Haman. He knew how to gel with his servants. Then the servants went to him. Hallelujah. Amen. And they said to him, Oh, Master. Master. The man of God has not asked for anything big. If he had asked for buildings, he would have delivered them. Even if he had asked for your wife, you may have given he didn't ask for anything. He simply said, go and do the ceremonial bathing in the river. This is not a big task. Go and do it, sir. You see, Naaman has a listening ear. No wonder God raised him. If he are here and you don't have a listening ear, you will not go far in life. There are some people, they never take advice. They think they are the smartest. God is watching. Very soon, you'll be exposed. And everybody will know your stupidity. Let us develop an attitude of respect for one another. Hallelujah. Amen. This big man listened to his servant. Then he went to the Jordan River and did the ceremonial bathing. And on the seventh time of now, the dipping, his skin was as new as that of a baby. There was total healing. I pray that this morning God touch you and bring renewal to your body. Then the man returned to the man of God. This time around, Elisha went out to meet him because he was ceremonially clean. May God clean you today and to qualify you for the reception of higher grace. Then the man said, My Lord, I came with several donkeys. They have laden them with gifts. So, my master, look at the money. Take them. Look at the clothes I brought. Take all of them. Look at the spices from the east. Take all of them. Then Elisha said, Even as my Lord is alive, I will not take anything from you. God gave you freely. And freely, I must observe that I do not exact anything from you. Elisha said, when you came to my house, did I come out to meet you? The man said, no. When you went to the Jordan River, was I there to push you into the waters? He said, no. He said, where did you get your healing from? The man may have responded, 
responded. Oh, because of your instructions. But Elisha will say, It is the doing of the Lord. Therefore, give the glory to God. Let somebody say, Let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord be magnified. So Elisha took nothing. And Elisha and he said, I will take nothing from you. Then the man left. Now, but before he left, he said, I beg of you. Can I take some of the soil in Israel to go and build an altar in Damascus so that I worship the God of Israel? Very soon, God will do something to you. And people will be converted to Christianity. Hallelujah. Amen. But Gehazi, now Gehazi, 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 the servant of the man of God, thought his master was a foolish man. You see, to the impure, nothing is holy. Then he said in his heart, Look at my master. Look at this man of God. I followed you for several days. But do what you be. You don't have anything. And today look at this gift. And he said, I won't take anything. Me, me. I'll follow the man. Me, and I'll go and take something for myself. He thought he was a wise man. Then he went out calmly. Then he followed the Syrian. Syrian when the Syrian saw him rushing to him, he stopped his chariot and went to Gehazi. So, son, what is wrong with you? Then Gehazi began to lie. So, my master sent me that he has received some. So when ya nesaka ho ho adi for me. So if you can give him something small. So bet mama ne bibi kakrebi ya. Attend to them. Na odi asum na di for nesaka. Very delightful. Then I give everything to you. Na papa ne se me di bibi ya mamu. Then take as much as you can. And the father do abe to bibi ya. So Gehazi got it. Na so Gehazi buwa buwa ne mana no. Thinking he had become rich. He went and hid them. Then he went to his master. So master. How are you? The man of God said Gehazi. Where are you coming from? So I didn't go anywhere. Once you begin to lie. You continue to lie. That's why you never begin it. May God bless and keep you. He said, oh, sir, I was just sitting under the tree. Oh, the man of God looked at him. He said, oh, young man. Said, oh, Abrante. oh, young man. Oh, Abrante. You carried a huge destiny. But today, you have contaminated yourself. Look at what has happened to you. I was with you in spirit when you followed the man. When the man stepped out of his chariot to come and talk to you, I was listening. And when you gathered the gifts and were hiding them, I saw you. Oh, my son. Is it the time to receive gifts? So, Elijah, by implication, was saying, that there are times that one may not take a gift. There are times that the door will be open for gift to be received. Today we are here to receive gifts because God has sanctified the day. This is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Put your hands together to honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he said, now, okay, say, My son, Beba. from today, you become a leprous man. And this disease will affect your children and your children's children. And very soon, you will perish from the face of the earth. You will not dwell in the inner part of the city. You find you are dwelling at the outer part of the city. 
Because you've allowed yourself to be seized by the spirit of covetousness. So, from this readings, we have noticed that there are times that one may not receive a gift. Then this same Elisha, Elisha, when he was about to die, did something else. In 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 7 to 9, I am reading, I'm reading and I want you to pay special attention. Because the first time I read it, my outlook changed. Initially, I thought Elisha didn't want to take anything from Assyria. But that wasn't the case at all. He was a man of God. And he may have seen something. Then Elisha went to Damascus. Now, Elisha, I call Damascus. Damascus is the capital city of the Syrians. Now, Damascus, I, uh, Syria for Ahimkro. Syrians have always been the enemies of the children of Israel. Syria for I bring in Arana what for Israel for Atamfo. Even as I'm talking to you today, it's the same problem. No Wakasano. Israel and Syria are technically. At war. Israel and Syria for quite a bit of war. Because they have not signed a peace treaty. Hallelujah. Amen. And Damascus. Now Damascus. The capital city of the Syrians. Syria for him, Krono. Is the oldest continuous capital city of the world. Elisha went to Damascus. Now Elisha called Damascus. And Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. Now Ben Hadad, Syria, Henina Oyare. And it was told to him now, that the man of God has come here. Very soon, kings will seek after you. I am forever to show. You will travel to a certain city. Then the king will look for you. And the king said to Hazel, Hazel said, Take a present in your hand and go to meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord by the man of God. That shall I recover from this disease? So Hazel went to meet him and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus. Damascus. Forty camel loaves. You see, in those days, and donkeys and camels were used as beasts of burden. You see, donkeys now, uh, were smaller. So they carried lighter goose. The camels are very huge and tall. So they carry heavy and they gathered 40 camels and filled them with stuff and they brought them to Elisha and Elisha received that because it was the right time to receive gifts beloved if only you can wait for the right time God will surprise you with the bounties of heaven I didn't hear an amen from you I said if only you can wait for your time God will surprise you with the bounties of heaven. Is somebody ready for the bounties of heaven? The Bible says, I will satiate you with the bounties of heaven. May God connect you to his storehouse. If you believe, you say, I receive. Let somebody say, I receive. I want us to do some. And all teachings. And I'm going to give you some truths about giving and gifts. You see, almost everybody likes gifts. Almost everyone. I am using the word almost advisedly. I wanted to say everybody likes gifts. But there are always exceptions. So let me say almost everyone. The Bible said that many will entreat the favor of the prince. 
And every man is a friend to him that gives gifts. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 6. So everyone will entreat the favor of the prince. The prince here in other versions said generous man. So the Bible believes that everyone delights in gifts. That's why great givers tend to attract much love. You see, when you are a great giver, people will love you. And God himself will love you. It is in the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So if you are a great giver, God will love you. Amen. 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 Human beings will love you. Nippon super dog. We just read it. Yeah, can can see And even animals will fall in love with you. Now empo and more crab dog. If you are very very generous, the oil be a be in some year. Your dog will love you. Or crab my bedog. Animals will fall in love with you. And more crab dog stronko. Trees will love you. And we dog. If you are a farmer, and you are generous towards the trees in your farm, now fair you food you know what we own mawana. You attract love. Or double brain, I watch him out. May God give you the spirit of giving. It is always a good thing to know that God is in love with you. Solomon gave. Solomon And God fell in love with him. And God gave him more. You see, when you give, human beings will also love you. The Bible said that the man that will hold the corn, the people will curse him. The blessings will be upon the house of the one who gives. And the general soul shall be made fat. So when you give, the people will bless you. Animals will bless you. And when you give, even trees will love you. They will clap their hands for you. They will give you a good yield. When you give, even rivers and water bodies will love you. Because Ghanaians and Africans are very mean to water bodies. When we go to fishing, we don't get much because we are wicked people. We destroy water bodies. We pour bola into our waters. We use galamse to corrupt our waters. So our rivers are dying. When we go to our territorial waters, we don't get fish. We go and come back empty handed. Because we are mean. We don't know how to conserve. We are greedy. We want to have it all today. We don't think about tomorrow. Givers are always thinking about tomorrow. Those who are receiving all the time will not get exponential blessings. Put your hands together to bless the Lord. Another character of giving. Now giving can take people to great places. A man's gift will make room for him. And bring him before princes. That is what the scripture says. If you are a giver, the chances that you stand before great men are very high. So learn the culture of giving. In fact, give generously. You see, your gifts gives you spiritual and other kinds of credits. The Bible said that it is more blessed to give than to receive. As chapter 20, verse 35. So when you give, you are spiritually credited. Even in common accounting. When you go to the bank and take money from them, they will debit your account. Then the bank will credit herself. 
So you are given and your gift can give you credit. Today God will give you credit. Credit here on earth and credit in heaven. If you believe, you say, I receive it. You see, you are given can release happiness into your heart. Giving is a power that releases happiness into the spirit of the giver and the receiver. When Cain gave wrongly, his countenance fell and he was seized with sadness. It contaminated his soul and he became a murderer in the process. I want you to appreciate this. There are two types of gifts. And that's why certain gifts must be refused. And that's why certain gifts must be accepted. The first gift is what we call good and perfect gifts. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above. It comes down from the father of light. So the first type of gift is gift that is good and perfect. This is the kind of gift that God gives to his children. It includes good health. It includes riches. And God give you all these things today. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. Then may God give you the anointing May God give you wisdom. James said, if someone is seeking for wisdom, let him go to God. Because this God is a giver by his divine nature. So some gifts are good and perfect. Other gifts are tainted and corrupted. That's what that's what God said in Exodus chapter 23 verse 8. He said, and you shall not take bribe. For bribe brings the descendant and perverts the words of the righteous. You see, almost everybody gives out something. Including Satan himself. Which is also give something. So if you are here and you are not a giver, you are stepping out of the ordinary. Do you know that when Satan met Jesus on the mountain of temptation, he promised to give him some kingdoms. So you see that the devil too sometimes gives. Because they've studied the word of God and they know the power of giving. But because Satan is evil ab initio, he cannot give good things because he's full of darkness. His gifts are tainted. So certain gifts must not be taken. Only a good gift must be received. And I've told you that everyone is giving out something. Another truth about gifts no, and giving. No, that there are times to reject some gifts. So, the Bible says a time to lose. And a time to cast away. And Elisha said, Elisha said, As the Lord lives, say Jehovah, before whom I stand, I will receive nothing from you. Elisha was a descending man of God. He was deeply spiritual. You see, today we have a lot of prophets on the face of the earth. And they are not descending. And they are not spiritual. It is their business to amass wealth. They go out to, to strip from the members of the church. They go out to tell a lie. 
Some prophets will come to you when they realize you have money. They will say your mother is a witch. They will say your sister is a witch. They will destroy everyone who is dear to your heart. Then they estrange you from them. Then they step into their shoes. This church present the word of God undiluted to bring deliverance to the captive. It is not our business to intimidate church members and to take from them. It is our responsibility to open their eyes so that they will step into giving so that giving becomes their lifestyle. They don't have to be intimidated to give. You have to educate them to make them to understand that as long as the earth remains, seed and harvest time will never pass away. Do not allow yourself to be deceived. Our God is a giver and all his children must be given in the mighty name of Jesus. Why are you destroying the church of God? I don't know who saying I'm sorry. Why are you disdaining the people of God? I don't know who put your member in Why are you disdaining the grace? I don't know who put Adam in it. Why are you ascribing good things to the devil? I don't know who the point in him about Sam. Why are you saying that it is the devil who makes people rich? I don't know who cast upon Sam and the point in him. Meanwhile, it is written in the Bible. Now, so written, that's what I'm saying. That the blessings of the Lord, so, Yahu and Sura, it makes a man rich. A man in the year, and he had no solo now, unto it. Now, I'm first to the whole year come. That's why I have the confidence that you become very rich. You become very powerful. God will bless you. There is one good thing I've seen about our pastors. They are great givers. I've been telling the general secretary that CSE pastors are great givers. And God will bless them. They will become very powerful. The man of God do not shake your responsibility to mislead the flock. Just give them the pure word. These people will prosper. Another warning I am giving. Let no pastor curse a church member. They are our wings. We need them. Therefore bless them all the time. David said, David is saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. After blessing the Lord at all times, bless his children. Bless the church members. Bless the elders. Bless the pastors. So pastors, every night when I am praying, I bless you. I bless you. And whenever I am talking in public, I declare the blessing. That is my responsibility. He said, Tell Aaron and his children that in this manner they should bless the children of Israel. So say this unto them. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and to give you peace. That is my vocation. Hallelujah. Amen. You will be blessed. Oh, so for mommy, you'll be blessed. So for mommy, you'll be your children will be blessed. Apostle, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed today. Man of God, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. I say you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me repeat this again. The days that we call people names. Calling them wizards, calling them witches are over. My leadership will not count and If you are a powerful man of God, deliver the witch. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are a powerful prophet, deliver the witch and stop destroying families. Why are you destroying families? Hallelujah. Amen. When Naaman came to Elisha, 
It was not the time to receive gifts. And because Elisha was a discerning man, Elisha he did not take the gift. What are the gifts that should not be received? One, when they are tainted because of their origin. Because if the gift is from illegitimate sources, you don't receive it. If the gift is intended to bribe you, do not take it. And so, if the gift is coming from demonically inspired people and organization, do not take it. These days there are organizations. They have, they have money. But if you take that money, we would have step out of the grace. Therefore, we have to be very careful. The day that this child become too money conscious, we will lose our spiritual identity. Gifts that are likely to undermine your integrity you will not take it. Any gift that can blackmail you be very careful. Any gift given at the wrong place. Depends, I want to give you something. Meet me at the club. Meet me at that lodge. Meet me at that place where anti God activities are done. You shouldn't go for that gift. It will contaminate you. Any gift. Given at the wrong place and at the wrong time should not be taken. Elisha did not receive the gift of Naaman. It wasn't the right time. He saw the spirit of leprosy in the gift. It is not all that greatest that is golden. He saw a beautiful car. But spiritually there was a spirit of leprosy in it. Because Elisha was discerning, he will not take it. Many a people change their paths because they accepted some dangerous gifts and became denatured. People began to ask questions. What happened to this man? What happened to this woman? Just some few months ago, his language was different. What happened? Some gifts can denature you. That's why you don't take certain gifts at the wrong Praise and at the wrong time. Now, even as I am concluding, then I am asking this question. What are those gifts that must be received? You see, Elisha waited. And when he was about to die, he went to Damascus. And Ben Hadad gave him a 40 loads of gifts. In today's parents, we say that it was a, a caravan of articulators. Forty of them loaded with gifts. So Elisha did not die in poverty. He has so much to bequeath to his children. Because he knew how to reject the wrong thing. Those who be strong enough to reject the wrong thing will be prepared to receive the right time. So when the right time comes, the heart of the discerning must know that this is the time. The Bible said that the sons of Issachar were wise because they understood the time and the season in which men ought to do what they needed to do. I know you are a discerning child of God. You see, when Christ Jesus was born, the wise men from the east, 
brought him gifts. So in the auspicious time, gifts must be given. And those gifts must be received. The wise men gave to Christ. And Christ received them. See, in that season, the spirit filled man of God must also know that this is the day to receive. When Ben Hadad gave to Elisha, Elisha knew that it was the right time to receive. And he didn't reject them. So on that day, when God declares that auspicious time, you must give bountifully. You give without remorse. Don't give grudgingly. But you so bountifully. When the right time comes, God fertilizes the ground. And God gives the dew of heaven to the ground. Then he declares, This is the time to give. Today you will give. And it will fall on the right soil. And it will germinate. It will grow. And you will yield your fruits in season. If you believe, you say yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When that time comes, so in expectation, as I said, oh, 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 I want you to lift up your hand. Say today, because God has sanctified the day and cleansed this ground and spiritually fertilized this ground and having watered it with the dew of heaven, I will sow. I will sow bountifully. I will not sow sparingly because I've heard the voice of God. You have somebody in the house who is ready to sow today. You are sowing into a ground prepared for more than 30 years. We are clearing every furrow ground today. And today we will sow. And we will sow in expectation. Even if you don't have much, I declare that you sow in tears. The Bible said there is a man. He went out sowing in tears. Then the Bible writer wrote, that doubtless, this man will reap in joy. After today's giving, you will reap in joy. You have your own husband. You have your own store. You will get a visa for the first time. If somebody will buy a ticket for you, the anointing will hover over your ministry. You will become powerful because you will sow in expectation. Lift up your hand. Say, Father, today I am sowing in expectation. I am not only giving to this man, but I'm giving to Christ Jesus, the rewarder of them that diligence. I know you are a rewarder. Because you are a rewarder, you never forsake me. Forsake me not, O oh Lord. Even when I am rich and gray headed, until I have declared your power to the next generation, today I will give. I will not withhold. I will bless this man. And Jesus said, Jesus said, on that day, that day no, I will say to you, I will say, come, bra, enter into my kingdom. Bra, my because when I was hungry, you didn't pray. You fed me. When I was cold, you clothed me. When I was sick, you visited me. Then you shall say to me, when did we find you to do all these things? Then I will say to you, in as much as you did it to this, my younger brothers, you have done it to me. So today we are giving to the rewarder who diligently will bless you. So we are giving to God. Give in expectation. Give to reward the hard worker. 
When I see somebody who is very hard working, when I see somebody who has a future, I always want to invest into that person's life. So in my church, I look around. When I find young men and women who are very, very progressive, I bring them closer and I invest into their life because I know God wants to bless them and I want to become a partaker of that process. So this man is a hard-working man. God will naturally bless him. That God wants to use us to bless him. Finally, let us give to shame the devil. You see, it is the desire of Satan that these ministers will fail in their calling. So anything I do to make them fail collaborates with Satan. You see, Satan wants to kill me. I mean, you don't have to be a prophet to know that. Satan wants to kill you. Satan and I don't have to be a prophet to know that. Because it is clearly written in the Bible. That the thief cannot not. But to steal. Kill. And to destroy. So whenever I assist the devil to kill this sister. I have collaborated with him. And I have become a partaker of his punishment. So I believe that God wants to bless this family. So blessing them. Means that we are collaborating with God. We are promoting the agenda of God. Satan wants to destroy destroy me. Anybody who will put in place machination to kill me, it doesn't really matter whether you are called a pope or a bishop. You are actually working for Satan. You are working in tandem with the forces of darkness. That's why all of us must be careful not to do things to decimate the people of God. My prayer is that today God God will bless all of you. May God preserve your ministry. May God prosper your ministry. May God bless your family. May God give you good health. May God empower you with riches. May God elevate you politically. May you see your children's children in all things. May you say the Lord has been good and I give thanks to his holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you for making time with us. We believe you've been blessed hearing today's message. For copies of today's sermon, audio, DVD, and MP3, visit the Christ Apostolic Church International Headquarters Bookshop at Osu, where you can also get other life-changing Christian literature. Follow us on these social media handles. Visit our website on www.cac-int.org. Send us an email, info at cac-int.org. For further inquiries, kindly call 055 055-970-9274, 055-970-9432, 023- 665-5555-0302-772497. You can also visit any of our branches worldwide and fellowship with us. Join us again on this channel. God richly bless you.